Ever wonder how you can turn your passion for photography into a career? Today, I'm gonna to give you the perfect recipe to jumpstart your photography business and avoid all the mistakes that I have seen my students make in the past. In this video, I'm gonna give you the steps you won't want to overlook to go from nothing but a camera and a dream to your first paying client. What's up everybody, my name is Jay LeBlanc, wedding photographer and photography educator. Listen, if you have a camera and you kinda know how to use it and you wanna turn your passion for photography into a side hustle or even a full-time career, I'm gonna give you the same advice that I give my college photography students when they're first starting out. And I have helped dozens of people turn their passion for photography into a full-time income stream. The advice I'm about to give you will help expedite the whole process and help you land your first paying gig. Let's be honest, the first thing that you need to know when starting a photography business is your own gear. Make sure that you know your gear inside and out. Sure, you can always buy more gear later on down the road, but learn the gear that you have right now. And when it comes time to invest, make sure you're investing in lenses before camera bodies. Camera bodies are gonna be really good and relevant for a very long time. Yeah, it's nice to have the newest and latest and greatest, but listen, a camera that was made 10 years ago will still deliver a very high quality image that your clients will be happy to receive. But investing in lenses will go a long way because the lenses last a very long time. They will stay with you from camera body to camera body. So when it comes time to buying new gear, buy better lenses from the beginning and then you don't have to worry about replacing them later on down the road. Lens technology isn't changing as fast as camera technology is. So your lenses will be relevant for much longer than your camera body will be. And when you're first starting off, the used camera market is a great place to look for some really good deals on used camera gear. But really, the most important part is learning your gear. Because if you show up to a shoot and you look like you don't know what you're doing, people aren't gonna wanna work with you again. I'm always losing lens caps. I don't know where the lens caps are for most of my lenses. It's probably why I keep breaking them. Good thing I have insurance. Would you wanna get in an Uber or a taxi with somebody who didn't know how to drive? Probably not. So why would somebody wanna hire a photographer that didn't know their own gear? All you gotta do, pick up your camera, practice. You can even do it while you're sitting on your couch watching TV, but learn your gear inside and out and it'll definitely make you look like you're more professional. While we're on the topic of learning, Learn basic editing. You don't have to be the best editor in the world, but at least learn enough so that you're able to deliver a good image to your clients. If you don't have any editing software right now, Lightroom is a great place to start. It's one of the most well-known photo editors in the photography industry. And some people might suggest Photoshop, but honestly, I do 98% of my work inside of Lightroom. You can pass on Photoshop and save yourself a couple bucks for now. Do you like my new plant? It's different from the last time that I showed this camera view. Secret time? It's fake. Sorry. There's a window right over there, but it never gets any direct sunlight in it. So I can't keep any plants alive on that shelf. And I feel like a shelf needs a plant. What do you think? If you like my new plant, give me a thumbs up. If you don't like my new plant, it's probably because you have common sense and don't spend a ton of money on fake plants. But the most important thing you can learn, learn basic business skills, such as communication, sales, marketing. And once you start making money, learn basic bookkeeping. Even if it's just taking your income and expenses and logging it into a spreadsheet, it's good to just have these practices in place to help set you up for success in the future and avoid a couple headaches along the way. Because if you aren't keeping good financial records, it could get a little dicey come tax time. Right now, I will tell you that there's probably a photographer out there making six figures a year and you are better than that. But you know what the difference between them and you is? They have good business skills. Trust me, learn business if you want to run your own business. If you wanna work for somebody else, it's totally fine. But if you plan to start your own photography company, learn basic business skills. Yes, you can always outsource a lot of this stuff later on in the future, but you wanna set yourself up for success right from the beginning. Use it to network. Right from the beginning, you gotta be organized. Use something to help keep all of your information together in one spot. Whether it's Dropbox, Google Drive, or something else, make sure that you have your systems organized and ready to go so you don't misplace stuff. From file structure and image organization, if you misplace the images from one of your shoots for a client, they're not gonna wanna hear that you can't find it on your hard drive. They're gonna expect that you just know how to organize your pictures. And as you get a little further into your business, consider using a CRM or a customer relation manager. It's basically just a nice big database with all of your information related to each one of your clients and each one of the jobs that you're hired to do. But for starting off, something free like Google Drive is more than enough. 
And since we're trying to implement good business skills, let's start right off by using contracts. Contracts will save you no matter who the client is, even if it's your own mother. Hi mom, if you're watching, make sure you're using a contract, especially while you're learning. It's really good practice to get in the habit of having a contract for everybody that you work with. You're gonna wanna leverage social media. Social media is a free advertising platform. Why would you not use it? I know there's a lot of different social media platforms out there, but you don't have to use them all. Pick one, maybe two, that'll work well with your target market and really lean into those. And then as you get comfortable with posting regularly and start building up a little bit of a following, feel free to branch out into other platforms, but really just focus on one or two and put a lot of effort into where you think most of your ideal clients are spending most of their time. And speaking of leveraging social media, use it to network. Grow your network as early as you can. Having people in your corner and somebody to turn to when you have questions or need help down the road will go a long way in making your learning process a lot easier. Look to your network for inspiration and help, but don't get intimidated by somebody who might be a little bit further along in their career. Using social media to help network, just like this platform right here on YouTube, you can comment and interact with other people in the comment section. You can message creators and ask them how they've done something. A lot of them will get back to you, especially the smaller channels, and it'll help you grow your business. And some of the best people that you can have in your network are people who are further along in their career. They'll be able to help you avoid some of the mistakes that they've made, just like I'm trying to do right here in this video. And if anything I've said so far in this video is helping you for starting your photography business, I'd really appreciate it if you could just like, subscribe, leave a comment below. I wanna hear how you are doing with your photography business. Now, they say pick your niche or niche or whatever you wanna call it when you're starting off as a photographer. But in my opinion, it doesn't really matter. I think you should actually do the opposite. I think you should try it all because you might go into it thinking, yeah, I wanna try car photography. And then you go and do some car photography and find out you don't actually like car photography because who knows, one day you might find what you're really interested in is something totally different than what you originally thought you wanted to do. So when starting off, keep your mind open. Maybe think of one, two, three types of photography that you might be interested in and give them all a shot before you really make your mind up. And nobody says you can't do more than one. Feel free to explore different avenues, but just understand that your clientele for each one of these types of photography might be slightly different or drastically different and learn how to market to each of them accordingly. And don't forget to continue practicing. Make sure you are still practicing your craft. If you're spending an hour on YouTube learning something new, spend an hour out practicing it. If you are researching something for 30 minutes on a new business topic, spend 30 minutes seeing how you can implement it into your business. Just make sure you keep on practicing. Nobody sat on the sideline wishing they got better and actually got better. You gotta practice. And while we're on the topic of practicing, don't just practice photography, but also practice business and practice good business. Focus on the customer experience. So much of today is about an experience. What's the difference between a $2,000 wedding photographer and a $5,000 wedding photographer? They might offer very similar packages and a little bit of experience might come with that more expensive price tag, but really what it comes down to is the experience that that $5,000 wedding photographer is giving. That $2,000 wedding photographer, that couple's getting treated just like whatever. That $5,000 wedding photographer or ones that cost even more than that, they're gonna give the couple a more luxury experience. Now this goes with all types of photography. That higher price tag usually means just a better user experience for the client. You know what they say, people may not remember what you said, but they will remember how you made them feel. And if you make them feel like they are the most important person in the world, while they are hiring you for a couple hours of your time, they're gonna wanna come back to you and continue to get that same experience from you because they know you are bringing not just a quality product, but a quality experience. And while I got you here, this is the uh, first time that I'm filming in my living room because I just remodeled my house. And do you like this background? Should I get out of my office a little bit more often and uh, use different parts of my house? Or should I just stay in my office and hide from my family? I think we might get out a little more often. See that corner over there? That's where my Christmas tree was. And now we bought another fake plant. We got a lot of fake plants in my house. I'll let you in on a little secret because my wife can't keep real plants alive. We've tried and she's failed many times. So now she has resorted to only fake plants. Don't tell her I told you though. And once you start making money, you're gonna wanna consider making your business a little bit more legit by forming an LLC. Now I'm not a tax professional by any means, so I'm not gonna go too far in detail with this. This is something for you and your accountant or tax person to discuss and figuring out which type of business would be the best for you to form. 
but I definitely suggest forming some type of business just to help give yourself a little separation between your personal assets and the business assets. But we don't have anything to worry about, right? Because we have contracts in place. Still form a business, get your insurance. It's important. Trust me, you'll thank me later. And the last thing I want to touch on is some of the things that you maybe don't want to spend as much time on. Now, I made another video talking about this topic and I will link it for you below. But some of the things I wanted to add to that video that I didn't get a chance to include when I made it, one would be stop scrolling social media. Like I said earlier, social media is a great place to market for free and network. Sitting there, scrolling social media, wishing you were as good as somebody is not going to make you better. If you find yourself constantly comparing yourself to others, post and ghost. Peace out because it's not worth your time and it's just gonna bring down your overall morale. So use social media only in a positive manner and stop hoping clients just magically walk in your door. Well, that'd be a little weird if they just walked in your door. So I hope they don't do that. But what I really mean is Stop hoping that they're just gonna show up. They're just gonna email you out of the blue like, oh my God, I think you might be a photographer. So let me go ahead and ask you to do this $10,000 shoot for me. No, man, you gotta put yourself out there. You gotta constantly remind people who you are and what you do. And the last thing I'm gonna say, I said it in my other video and I'll say it here. Stop watching YouTube. YouTube is awesome for learning something, but if you just sit home all day long and just keep watching videos, you're not gonna ever grow. You gotta get out there, you gotta start working, you gotta start marketing, you gotta start networking. You have to have these experiences to grow as a person and as a business. Sitting home watching YouTube is not the way to do it. Yes, I'm making a YouTube video telling you to watch less YouTube. So get out there, grow your business, and I hope that you are successful. I hope you found some use in this video. If you made it this far in the video, do me a favor, like and subscribe because I'm gonna keep giving you more quality content just like this. I teach at a college and I'm going to give you the same material Material that I give college students who are photography majors. And until the next video, peace. But don't get intimidated by somebody who might be a little bit further along in their career. <laughs> Jayla Boeing here, nope. wedding photographer, and. That's not it. Mm. I'm Jayla Boeing. I'm dancing. I'm dancing. <laughs> pew, pew, pew. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs>